How's it going everyone? This is your brother Zun and I greet everyone in the forever family of Essence International with a all glory to God. And with that said, I pose the question or really I question myself on why should I complain? The main idea today is coming from chapter 20 verses 2 to 11. And what really got me was the dramatization of the verse. If you haven't heard it, it's <laughs> it cracked me up. Simply because the way the lady dramatize the agony and anguish it was reminiscent of a insurance commercial and I'm gonna be vague as to not plug or you know copyright infringement or whatever but it's an insurance company with a little reptile as their mascot and one of the commercials you know they're going through different takes of something and he goes hey do the try the dramatic one and the way he oh i have a flat tire <laughs> you know it was similar the dramatization today <laughs> when i heard her in that tone of voice and the agony she really did a, a great job whoever she is it caught my attention because it reminded me of this commercial but once I started listening closer to it, she was really voicing the complaint of the people. Ultimately, they were stating the truth and they were stating the obvious. They were taken out of slavery. They were in the wilderness. And now they were in the desert with no water. And I started looking at this. And the first thing that stood out to me was the fact that God was and is leading every step of the way. My personal belief is that before he said, let there be light, he had this plan in mind and he put it into motion with those words and everything from that point on, i.e. time itself, is just meant to serve the purpose of revealing his plan. Now, it's not that he has dictated what we do and what we don't do. No, I believe he gives us the choice for everything, but he knows every choice that we would take and thus actually put something in place to help. He also does know if we're going to accept the help or not. So I think I said that to try to get this whole predestination thing out because that's hard for me to swallow or comprehend from a loving and caring God. Especially from one that says, and this is his word he says, it is not his will that any should perish. So for someone to come around and say, oh, well, he's... He's destined some for this and some for that. That for me goes against what he says. It is not his will that anyone perishes. He did not create hellfire for mankind. That that wasn't the place. It was it was created for the fallen. Those that fall under their spell. That's another story. But I don't want to get too far into that. It's going back to the point of just stating the obvious but really not knowing so yes they were enslaved came out of that 
endured hardship in the wilderness and then now they are dying of thirst however again instead of complaining the realization that God is leading and knowing that he will always give a way of escape he will always provide it is his nature instead of complaining it was just a matter of taking that same voice and using it to speak to the hard place you know that saying stuck between a rock and a hard place well they seem to be in that predicament here I would go so far as to say is this is where that originated from but instead of looking at it in the sense of oh I'm stuck God says, I led you here so you can speak. I kept going and I see that he actually, in verse 13 of chapter 20, I believe gives the purpose for all this. Well, God, why are you leading us through these hard times just to speak? Why didn't you just keep it, you know, green pastures the whole way? And I believe, again, verse 13 of chapter 20 lets us know that through all of these things, his holiness is revealed. So he allows mankind to do our kind of, kind of stuff. And then he sits back and after everything is done and exhausted, then he steps in. And so there's a contrast. And then with this contrast, I realize who I am and get an idea of who he is. And if I want to get to the higher plane, I have to get out of myself and turn to him. Again, speaking to the rock of my salvation. For once that happens, his rivers of living water pour out over my soul. So the title of today's, or if I was going to give a main idea for today, and of course I like, you know, playing on words, but it was, but it is, when there is no, no, N-O-K-N-O-W. And ultimately that means when there's just a not knowing Because the focus and the vision is really on Where Or this this occurs for me When I focus on Where I've been And where I'm probably I'm at and I don't understand or whatever the case may be instead of and then complaints come instead of really seeing it for what it's saying no my Lord the Good Shepherd is leading me and there's a purpose behind all of this because it's for a blessed contrast to know the difference between the holy and the unholy Especially in this world where it seems like there is no knowing. You know, it's like nobody knows that gender fluidity, fluidity is an abomination. Nobody knows that being so fast paced in this life and not taking the time to really connect with each other. Families bonding and uniting. You know, I realize that it's so easy to get caught up in not knowing the importance of feeding my soul with daily bread, for spending time in 
quiet sessions with the Lord. There's a not knowing what tomorrow holds. If tomorrow is promised. If it's not promised, but if tomorrow ever comes. There's a not knowing, but in that uncertainty, God's holiness is revealed to me. And that's all I need to know. Cap Tion this. Sirs.